Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are here and our hope is that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We continue with our series titled The Way of the Cross. Pastor Gershon shares with us today on how this way is one of heavy hardship. As we listen to the word, can we ask God to speak to us and help us on our journey through life? Hi church, it's such a joy and a privilege to be meeting with you in this online experience. Uh, we are so glad that we get to worship God together and hear God's word together. And so even before we go into God's word, I just want to say a quick prayer so that God will open up our hearts and that we'll be able to listen to his word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've been doing this entire week. And I pray that even as we dwell deeper into your word, Lord Jesus, and even as we continue on with this series, that you would be with us. Lord, may your light shine through your word, Lord Jesus. And even as I speak, I pray that, Lord, you would be speaking through me, Lord Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, at the end of it, all those who are seeking answers will be able to find you, Lord Jesus. Our faith will get strengthened. And I pray in the midst of everything that we are going through, we'll be able to stand strong and say that you, Jesus, are with us. We thank you, Lord. Be with us and bless us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Even as we've been going through this entire series, uh, The Way of the Cross, We've been seeing how uh, Jesus is the way and he's the way maker. We saw that, you know, if you decide to follow him, he's the only way. We saw what scripture says that he is the way, the truth and the life. Then we went on to see that, you know, following Jesus should not be forced. We saw how it has to be this unforced rhythms of grace where, you know, every day you start experiencing him and that love that comes out of it is just so unforced that you just want more of him. You want to spend more time with him. You want to do more what his word says and what he says and what the Holy Spirit guides you to do every step of the way. Then we saw the third uh, part of the series, what it is to lead a life of selfless service. We saw how time and again, every day our self creeps up. In fact, by our very nature, We are tuned to just think about ourselves. But then following Christ, we realize that, you know, the word says that we have to die to ourselves. Jesus says, if you have to follow me, you need to die to yourself, which means you can't, you know, just be thinking about yourself, but you need to start thinking like how I'm thinking. You need to start doing what I would do. You would need to be in places where I would want you to be in. And we saw that that this selfless service pushes us to love like Jesus and to serve like Jesus. And today we're going to look at the fourth part. And this is the way of heavy hardships. Even as we were preparing this uh, entire series and, you know, putting down the different points. And even as uh, my name was put across heavy hardships, uh, I knew this was a tough topic to talk on. Because let's face it, everyone who's decided to follow Jesus is going to have it hard. If you're just a namesake Christian, if you say, you know what, I'm just following Jesus for the sake of doing it because uh, I'm surrounded by people like that. Or I just love, uh, you know, uh, the the vibe that's around. It, it might not be that hard because, you know, there are certain things you give, certain things you keep to yourself, certain things you follow, certain things you don't follow. But when you wholeheartedly and completely decide to follow Jesus, when Jesus is that only way and there's no other way, when you know that Jesus is only your true and living God and there's no other God, life becomes hard. And in fact, Jesus time and again goes on to say that following him is going to be hard. And so the, we've titled this uh, fourth part of the series called The Way of Heavy Hardship. The truth is everyone who follows Christ has a hard life. It's not like the first five years are going to be hard and then it's going to be blessed and then it's going to be prosperous. No. Every step of the way, God blesses us, God prospers the work of our hand, God prospers the families that we are in. But in the midst of all that, we still have heavy hardships. And so one of the things about heavy hardships is, uh, it's, I mean, the two words itself, hardship is one thing, but heavy hardship is that in this Christian walk, you'll soon realize that if you've decided to do be of selfless service, what hurts others hurts you. What concerns others concerns you. If you're in a city and God's laid a heart on your, uh, uh, about the city, what happens is that that concerns you and that becomes heavy on you. And then automatically that becomes 
a heavy thing that you start carrying and you start praying and interceding till you start seeing revival happen till you start seeing things turn around still you uh, till you start seeing br- bondages being broken that heavy hardship is with each and every one of us in our walk with Christ but how do we handle it do we just say you know what this life is not for me and we just drop the towel and say you know what it quits you know i i can't i i'm i'm just i'm leaving i'm leaving this i can't handle this anymore or are we going to go and say god i don't know how i can face this but i'm calling the god of angel armies to come by my side and so today church probably you're going through something many a times we don't tell and everything to anyone or we don't tell anyone anything but are you willing to tell jesus and say lord in the midst of my heavy hardship i want you to be with me So reading from Luke chapter 14 verse 25 to 33 it goes on to say as massive crowds followed Jesus he turned to them and said when you follow me as my disciple you put aside your father your mother your wife your sisters your brothers it will even seem as though you hate your own life this is the price you'll pay to be considered one of my followers Anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own or he cannot be considered to be my disciple. So don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who would construct a house before first sitting down to estimate the cost to complete it? Otherwise he may lay the foundation and be not able to finish. The neighbors will ridicule him saying, "Look at him, he started to build but couldn't complete it." it goes on to say in verse 31 have you ever heard of a commander who goes out to war without first sitting down with strategic planning to determine the strength of his army to win the war against a strong opponent if he knows he doesn't stand a chance of winning the war the wise commander will send out delegates to ask for the terms of peace likewise unless you surrender all to me giving up all you possess you cannot be one of my disciples it's beautifully said he says here in verse 26 the second half he says this is the price you'll pay to be considered one of my followers anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own or he cannot be considered to be my disciple verse 28 so don't follow me without considering what it will cost you so today I know a lot of us uh, have been in the crossroads where you know life and uh, us just traveling along we kind of like came across something hard we called on help and Jesus came but beyond that when you want to start living out intentionally every day what was me do we must actually ask God I want to follow you all the days of my life and Jesus definitely will guide us through this over the next uh, few seasons of our life in fact to give up and changing that order that we've kept in our lives for some of us it can be work that takes our topmost precedence for some of us it can be our kids for some of us it could be a spouse for some of us it could be uh, the things that we own but jesus is saying will you give up everything to follow me will you be able to count the cost because let's uh, face it jesus does not want anything else to take the place he doesn't want to sit among other things he just wants to be your only savior and he is your only savior there's nothing else that is there in this world that can save you so even as i was reading this and i was as i was meditating god kept reminding me keshum have you counted the cost it says here who will actually build a house without considering the cost who will actually go into war without considering the cost today if you guys had to make an investment probably into a phone into you know even into buying a house you give it so much thought you ask financial advisors you ask people your friends you ask you read a lot of articles probably before you make certain decisions you count the cost you kind of like go through knowing what to expect knowing what will be needed at the end of it but today can we actually get down and say god i know following you i might need to you know channel all these other things that i've placed above you and move that below you and say lord i don't want to give importance to everything else 
for some of us, it can be our parents that we have to look after. For some of us, it'll be someone who's ailing in health. For some of us, you know, the very burden of debt, of EMI, of month on month expenses. For some of us, just pleasing our boss, making sure so that we somehow think that our future is secure. But God's telling, hey, if you've decided to follow me, if you're on this uh, pathway in the way of the cross, you will need to understand that you'll need to count the cost. And even today, even as I've taken this passage, for us to think if we'll be able to count the cost in the midst of heavy hardship is because when we go through hard times, we actually remove Jesus out of the equation. We actually remove Jesus out of the mix. We, in fact, say, you know what, Jesus, if I decide to follow you and I'm going through a hard time right now, I think I can find another solution. And invariably, we all have done this. Invariably, we all have been on this journey where, you know what, we put, we've moved Jesus aside. We've stopped listening to him and we've gone on this journey finding every other possible solution. But Jesus is saying, hey, if you've decided to follow me, you shouldn't give up on me. You should hold on to me like never before. You should be willing to tell that I am the only source. I am the only one who can actually bring you answer and redemption and salvation and save you and set your feet on the rock. Because there's nothing else that can do that. And today, church, I want us to be encouraged knowing that in this journey of heavy hardship, will we be able to count the cost and say, Lord, I don't want to call uh, early on and say it quits. I don't want to you know, write you off and say, this is not my journey. And so today, many people are falling away from faith because of the hardships that they face. Because they somewhere think, you know, if I follow Jesus, it's going to be a bed of roses. If I follow Jesus, he'll work everything out. Yes, if I follow Jesus, he'll look after me like a child. So he won't allow anything bad to happen. But honestly, a good father is there with you even when the bad things happen. A good father holds your hand and takes you through. And so the, the motion that we have to see when we are actually following Jesus is one that is one of moving and not stationary. Because the biggest mistake that we all do is when we face heavy hardships, we just take that hardship that we have and we just hold on to that position and we say, this is my life. This is what I'm stuck with. This is what I have to deal with. But Jesus is saying, hey, you've counted the cost. And if you've counted the cost and you've placed me on top, I'm going to allow you to move even with that heavy hardship. And in turn, what will happen is God will break those chains. He'll break those heavy, he'll give us that redemption. He'll give us that freedom that we need in time. And we'll be able to be a testimony of his goodness. But many a times, sometimes, you know, we don't even get to see that. Those heavy hardships, you know, sometimes God says, son or my child, enough. I want to see you now face to face. And so we see so many people who we know, who we in our timeline feel that they have not lived their life fullest. But in God's timeline, He's seen them achieve their purpose. I know so many friends who've lost dear ones from spouses to their children, to their parents, either to illness or to some struggle or heavy hardship that they're going through. And many a times we don't have the answers. And I think we are never meant to have the answers. It's only God who has the answers. But can we rely and ask God, God, in the midst of heavy hardships, I'm going to count the cost and I'm going to be faithful to you. So the first thing that we're going to see that how can we, you know, in the midst of heavy, if you're going through some big struggle, probably you're going through a separation right now, or probably you're going through a time of loneliness where, you know, there's no one around you. I would say, you know, can you just lean on Jesus? Count the cost. You know, sometimes uh, counting the cost looks like blind faith where you just say, you know what, God, I'm following you no matter what. I don't need anything else. It comes down to that place where we can declare it and believe it. And so if you're in that journey where you're uh, struggling through something internally, emotionally, or even probably it can be a physical sickness that you're going through, I would encourage you, lean in. The first thing I want us to see, even as we're journeying on in this way of heavy hardships is, our allegiance must be Jesus alone. There's no one else. You need not ally yourself with anyone else. 
You don't need to have so many people around. You just need to make sure your allegiance is with Jesus. Honestly, it's it's tough. Today, we are living in a time and age where our faith is going to be questioned a lot. But where is our allegiance going to be? Is it going to be dictated by popular culture? Or is it going to be dictated by the decision that we've decided to make in our hearts with Jesus alone? And are we willing to hold on to him? And the reason why I've taken this word allegiance with Jesus is uh, because today uh, we join forces or join hands together or join uh, our views and everything that we in and our friendships and our connections together with people who agree with us. And having an allegiance with Jesus sometimes means we have to hear the hard truth. And Jesus is always going to speak the truth only. He's not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. He's not going to put a layer of, you know, some sweet, uh, uh, a sweet, um, you know, topping there so that you'll take it well. No, he's going to hit you with the truth. Because the truth is the one which will set you free. So can we just read from John chapter 15 verses 18 to 21 from the Passion Translation. It says, just remember when the unbelieving world hates you, they first hated me. If you are to give your allegiance to the world, they would love and welcome you as one of their own. But because you won't align yourself with the values of this world, they will hate you. I've chosen you and taken you out of the world to be mine. So remember what I taught you, that a servant isn't superior to his master. And since they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And if they obey my teachings, they will obey yours. They will treat you this way because you are mine. And they don't know the one who sent me. Verse 20 says, because they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And because you decide to follow the name of Jesus, what happened to Jesus is what might happen to us or what will happen to us. But are we willing to still say our allegiance is with Jesus? It's interesting. Um, I've, uh, I've, I've been doing a lot of um, documentary stories over the, uh, over the last one year. And um, some of the stories have really hit home. You know, hit home in the sense it's worked so much in me, even as I'm editing their stories, because you get to see this raw, unedited version of their story. And um, life is hard. And, you know, even as I was preparing this, I, it was a like God focusing me to see that everyone's life is hard. There's no one who's a select few who have life easy. Today, we think, you know what, the less privileged are the ones who are having life hard. No, even you ask a, a middle-income group, they'll tell you their life is hard. They, they're unable to make ends meet. You ask a person who's well-off and super rich, they'll be still saying that their life is hard because they need to maintain what they have. They need to kind of like survive. And the and because they they are their focus is something else, they are, they are constantly on the move like, I need to do more, more, more. There's, and in, eventually, they all of us are going through some form of hardship. In fact, just this last year, it's going to be a year since we've been used to these words called lockdown, you know, and uh, having a pandemic. We've all had a fair share of struggles. Today, it's just not one person or one people group or one nation that's experienced loss. No, every nation on the face of the earth has experienced so many people, so many loved ones of them just passing away and in the midst of this can we still say our allegiance is with Jesus you know the interesting thing is because we worship an all-knowing God because we worship an all-knowing Savior we sometimes think because we worship him and because we you know we relate to him like uh, we call him father and you know we we say God you are my God we somehow think that all-knowing God will always be telling us everything and it doesn't work like that. He's saying, hey, you've decided to follow me, count the cost. But also remember in your decision to follow me and counting the cost, remember that the world persecuted me. The world always wants you to, you know, ally next to what values them most. But when you shift away and you 
you know move in accordance to my word and do what my word says they will hate you they'll find any reason to hate you just your very presence might be the only thing that hates and sometimes and the bible clearly says you know it's not a physical hate that we experience from person to person but the fight that we are you know in is happening in the spiritual realms it's between the forces of darkness is between satan who's always constantly trying to find a way because he doesn't want you to stick to the word he wants you to stick to his dominion his world view and so to our church today even as we are on this journey can our allegiance be with jesus it's going to be tough i remember uh, when i was 6 in 6th standard in 6th standard 5th and 6th standard uh, we uh, were going for one one church gathering and this was in dubai and uh, the place where we went was in a quadrangle you know there be a lot of other rooms where different other churches met and there was this one gathering that happened and um, there was this um, uh this missionary you know who was there with his wife and um, it it happened and it was a gathering of lot of churches together and it was richard umrand and uh, i remember as a small kid as 11 year old you know just sitting there and hearing his story and this is when uh, the communists had taken rule and when he stood up in fact later on when i went on to read a lot of his story i realized that you know he uh, didn't do what everyone else was doing he didn't want to align himself to what his other fellow um, you know pastors were doing in that country he stood up and said jesus is the only way and the opportunity when he got he spoke on a broadcasted uh, you know event he spoke the gospel instead of speaking highly about uh, who, about the government that he was supposed to talk about and that what eventually happened was for the next 12 years he was you know put into solitary um, you know imprisonment and you know it it says that the the jail that he was in was 30 feet deep he said he didn't even know whether it was night day he couldn't smell flour he couldn't touch paper he said after 12 years he had missed just everything that he had to do he had to learn everything again cuz just being in darkness but it's interesting the beauty of following jesus the beauty of you know doing life in this heavy hardship is that jesus shows up he and his wife were tortured time and again for the for the next 12 years but he said you know in that cell a divine visitation of jesus happened a light that shone so bright he said from then on hope was that that god's going to do something big hope was that that god's going to use him as a testimony for many nations and then miraculously he came out of there and then they moved away and then they set up this entire organization called voice of the martyrs where they started you know highlighting the journey and stories of all those who are taking that stand of heavy hardship and saying their allegiance is only to jesus alone from around the world and so um back in 2001 2002 when dc talk came out with this song called jesus freak they put out a book called find the voice of the martyrs and it's this beautiful book i would encourage you if you can get your hands on it there are a couple of new editions that have come out but there are stories in this time and again of people who've overcome heavy hardships and the truth is overcoming heavy hardships is not about the journey it exalts them no it's the only thing that they say is it's about jesus it's that jesus kept them for a reason to share their story and some majority of them did not make it through majority of them gave their life and so today um, even as i'm talking this you might be like this, this is so extreme but all of us have our own way of heavy hardships today we live in such a fallen world where our hardships could be completely different probably i'm talking to a parent who's uh, who's lost their child to drug abuse or i'm talking to someone who's probably on um, you know on the brink of heavy depression just unable to see themselves they feel like they're useless in this world or probably the hardship that you're carrying through is one where you loved the spouse of yours but they just decided to walk out on you or your hardship could be that one uh, news of ill health that you didn't want to have 
but you're struggling through or something that you've grown up with struggling all your life and now it's gotten the world of you for some of you it could just be the very thing of you know um, after having a family the pressure of just leading your family the pressure of just being with your family that you just feel like you don't know how long you can take it whatever it is remember our fight here on earth is temporary but we'll ask jesus to give us the strength and he gives us the strength no matter what and even as i've just shared about uh, richard umbren i want to read from luke chapter 9 verse 26 it goes on to say for whoever is ashamed here and now of me and my words the son of man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the heavenly father and of the holy angels so today let us in our midst of heavy hardships let's not be ashamed of who we are aligning ourselves to let's be you know let's in fact hold wave the flag higher saying that we are with jesus in fact jesus is with us you know and that's nothing that can separate let us know that this camp is one of jesus who is the leader it's interesting today that we're living in a world where we want to align ourselves with something and so the biggest problem for us even when we look at the word of god is we don't want to entirely align ourselves so if you look at it you know we look at if this is the word and if this is me you know we kind of like see okay there are five things out of the five only three things align it comes like this you know it's we keep the word here you know okay i i, I can't do what the word says because i don't think it's contextually relevant i don't think it's written for the 20 for being in 2021 i think they didn't imagine what a world would look like if there was one with mobile phones so this the word of god does not make sense but jesus is asking hey that word of god is timeless my words are true it's lasted through the ages so if there's one thing that you need to align yourself with you need to align yourself entirely and when we align ourselves entirely with him we can see so many things happen and so church today i want you to be encouraged saying that if you are taking time to read the word read it with all your heart ask god to open up your heart so that he'll be able to reveal the deep mysteries so that you can make that deep foundational alignment with him and that you know if anyone asks who's camp you are and you'll be able to say i am in the camp of jesus the my own savior who's redeemed me who set me free and irrespective of whatever the world throws at me i'm going to stay planted and stay in this solid rock so that i'll be able to testify i'm going to read from john chapter 16 verse 33 and it says i have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering but be courageous be confident be undaunted be filled with joy I have overcome the world my conquest is accomplished my victory abiding I'm going to read that again especially for those of you who are going through heavy hardships for those of you who you know are in that T junction not knowing whether to take a left or a right remember that when you align yourself with Jesus when he is with you claim this over yourself it says, goes on to say i have told you these things so that in me in jesus you will have perfect peace perfection can only come through jesus we can never attain perfection we can aim for perfection but we'll always fall short of it but when you decide to be with jesus you will have that perfect peace perfect peace is that you can be in the midst of the storm and still have peace you can be in the midst of trial you can still have peace perfect peace is when you can be in the midst of confusion and still your spirit will be at peace he goes on to say in the world you'll have tribulation and distress and suffering oh but he says in this but be courageous be confident be confident because jesus is with you be undaunted because jesus is with you so you can take that next step in faith be filled with joy because when you have jesus in you all that you'll radiate outside will be one of joy so church today in the midst of heavy hardships let's take and receive this because jesus has said i have overcome the world the way of the cross it's one of confidence because you're facing the enemy and the enemy must know that the that you are on jesus side and the thing about being on jesus side is the battle is already won we just have to be prepared for battle so that every time the enemy schemes something at us we'll be able to stand our ground and fight it 
because of the assurance and what God's word says, I have overcome the world. I love how in the Amplified it goes on to say, it says, my conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. That is the assurance, church. That is the assurance. The second way in this way of heavy hardship is that we need to be surrounded by a Jesus-following community. Yes, you heard me right. We need to be surrounded by a Jesus-following community. We're going to read again from Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 onwards. It goes on to say, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, it goes on to say, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose or permit and declare lawful on earth, shall be already have been loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two believers on earth agree, that is, are of one mind, in harmony, about anything that they can ask, within the will of God, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am there among them. What an assurance to say by Jesus, you know, that you're not alone. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name. And so that's why in every season, why don't you just be around Jesus' followers? So that when they celebrate, they celebrate with you. When they cry, they cry with you. When you um, when you are struggling, they also struggle with you. It's interesting that, you know, being in a Jesus following community, the kind of strength that you have when you actually don't have the strength. The kind of peace that you will have when you don't actually have the peace. The kind of assurance that you'll have when you don't have the assurance. I love how, you know, God kind of brings people together. You know, God doesn't bring people together just randomly. God brings people and connects that dot intentionally so that we'll be able to strengthen one, one another. Yes, the Bible does say iron sharpens iron. So yes, we, we might not get our relationships always right. But what we'll get right is in Jesus' name, whatever we do will always be done right. In Jesus' name, whatever we agree on will be agreed on right. And that's what I love, uh, the fact that we as a church have been praying and we've seen miracles happen time and again. Every Wednesday when we meet in our midweek prayer, it's interesting the prayer points that we have. Half the time, the prayer points that we have are not even for the people within our church. But we've been praying and interceding for so many of them who are outside. But the strength that they've received, and so even before our Wednesday prayer, between the Monday to our Wednesday, we get in touch or we are in touch with all these people who, you know, have seen the power of prayer. And they are saying, you know what, please do continue to pray. Please do keep us in prayer because we can sense, even though they are not physically present or even though they are not in the city, when someone who's so far off is going through a struggle, who's saying, you know what, uh, can you please pray for me? I'm really scared uh, about my results or I'm really scared about this path that we are in or this journey that we are in. And when we as a church, when two or three, when we agree together, and if it is in will of God, we've seen it come through. And so eventually those prayer points automatically within the following, you transfer to a praise point. And that happens within being in Jesus' community. Because at the end of it, what happens in Jesus' community is this simple. We all come there knowing that we don't have everything. We don't have, in fact, anything and we need each other. We need each other to speak life. We need each other to stand in the gap and pray. So standing in the gap requires strength, requires fervency, requires, you know, consistency. And time and again, we've seen when we stand in the gap for others, we've seen God come through. What we've bound on earth is bound in heaven. And what we've released on earth is also released in heaven. And we've seen that happen. So today I would encourage you, if you've not experienced the power of being in a community, take that first step and say that I want to be in a community of people who believe in Jesus, of be people who say, you know what, I want to follow Jesus. It's interesting that uh, time and again in my life, I've always surrounded myself with people in, uh, in, in a Jesus community in different locations, wherever I've been all through my life. That's been my lifeline, in fact. It's, it's not like you get to do, we'll be doing all the happening things around, no. But the fact that we get to be there for one another. 
I love what it says in Acts 12, verse 12 to 14. It's a beautiful story where, you know, Peter's imprisoned. And when Peter's imprisoned because of the faith that's been uh, spreading around the city, what happens is the early church suddenly just gathers. And when they gather, they start praying. They start praying and then they see a miracle happen. What were they doing as Jesus community? They were praying. You know, it's, it's uh, invariably, uh, it's the time of prayer that we see the less attendance. But our requests are always very high. The number of people who ping us saying, hey, can you pray for this? Can you stand in the gap for this? But I would encourage you, the more we all join our hands together, it just doesn't happen uh, over a weekend or on a Sunday. No, let's take the time and effort to stand in the gap for others. And invariably, when we need someone to stand in the gap, we will have others who will stand in the gap for us for a time. I still remember two and a half years back when we had to take um, uh, my wife whose procedure over the brain aneurysm is happening. Uh, and the prayer rally that just got surrounded, it didn't even happen with church people because at that time, the church was just five or seven of us. That's it. It went beyond friends from pretty much all over the world just joined, came into a group. And every hour they stood in the gap and they prayed and they prayed till she came out, till she came out of the stroke ICU ward, till she was back in the room, till she could actually text them all saying, I'm back, I'm feeling better. That's what standing in the gap looks like. And so today, church, I would encourage you, whatever season you're in, you don't have to be in a perfect season to be in a Jesus community. Any season, is it good? Is it bad? Is it lonely? Is it, you know, uh, whatever emoji you want to put it over there, you can put. But can you please, please take that step? You don't have to come to this church. If you're watching online and if you, if you're in another city, plug yourself to another local church somewhere. Because there's power when we gather in twos or threes and when we call on the name of Jesus. I just want to read why it's important. Because oftentimes we don't understand what happens when we actually gather together. When we gather together, faith is decreed. Faith is spoken. You know, faith is believed. But sometimes when others who believe along with you, it's spoken out loud. And the second thing that happens when faith is spoken is, the second thing that we see which come hand in hand is unity. An agreement. You know, it, it goes on to say in the Bible, you know, if one can slay a thousand you know, a hundred can slay 10,000. The ratio is different in God's eyes. So that's why when we agree together, just not one, but in twos or threes and as many as we can, we will see things turn around. And in the midst of heavy hardships, this will be our anchor. This will be something that holds us deep. This will be something that keeps us strong in our faith in Jesus. It goes on to say in Revelation 12 verse 11, they conquered him completely through the blood of the Lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives, even when they faced with death. And so the, in the end, the victory was there. Death was defeated. The enemy was defeated. They were in fact cast down, right down into hell, the pit of fire. But it says here, they conquered him completely with two things. The one which redeemed us, who is the way, who is the way maker? Who is Jesus? Who is none other than Jesus? The second is by the word of the testimony. And so today, God wants us to testify in the midst of our hardships of who he is. God wants us to testify in the midst of our hardships in agreement with one another so that we'll be able to see God come through. Because at the end of it, it's not about, um, you know, us to say, you know, we prayed 10 prayers, 10 got answered. No. It's about to say we, you know, prayed 10 prayers and Jesus came through everything. We called on the name of Jesus, the power of testimony. Because those 10 prayers that were prayed and when they're converted into testimonies, the impact that they have will be multitudes. It wouldn't just be 10, it might be exponentially more. That's what happens when Jesus is being glorified. When the testimony is all about Jesus, it changes the equation. Reading from James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, it goes on to say, Are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? Encourage them to pray. Are there happy, cheerful ones among you? Encourage them to sing out their praises. 
Are there any sick among you? Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the prayer will raise them up. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed for tremendous powers released through a passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Even as we said earlier, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony, his testimony is one that he's conquered the grave. And that happens when we actually, as a group of believers, come in agreement together. We see here, it says, if you're happy, encourage one another. That's what happens in a Jesus-believing community. We encourage one another. We are happy for one another. We learn to overcome our a human self of jealousy, of greed, of bitterness and all that. And we say, you know what? Jesus has blessed you. We want to, we are happy and we are so joyful for you. The second thing it goes on to say, if anyone of among you is sick, they will pray the prayer of faith. The elders will come across, they will lay their hands and they'll be healing. Even James who wrote this epistle, you know, he passed away and it says the the highlighted verse in this book, it in fact takes, it says, when a believing person prays, great things happen. It says here, James the Just, that was uh, what um, he was known as. And in 63 AD, he was actually persecuted. He was thrown off the wall where he was standing and preaching. When a believing person prays, great things happen. And I would take it a little further. When a believing person prays with a believing community, greater things will happen. It just doesn't stop with you. It strengthens others who are in the community. It strengthens others to believe that, you know what? Hey, this person went through this struggle, but they called on Jesus and this is what happened. So if I'm going through this, I need to call on Jesus. And eventually what will happen is they will call on the community, say, hey, can you also pray and believe with me? So even as we close, I just want to encourage each of us that whatever our trajectory is like in this life, Right now, you might not be facing any hardship, but if there's something that you're facing right now, remember that God's asking you, will you align yourself with him? Because when you align yourself with him, he will reveal so many things to you, which you will see him come through time and again in your life. And don't journey alone. Journey along with a Jesus-believing community so that he'll be able to work in and through you in the time of difficulty. Others will be there around to stand with you. Because remember, where two or three are gathered, he is there with you. Our prayer is that you'll have a blessed week and God bless you. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion and to connect with us, go to wearezion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus, finds life.